Does race matter? Obviously, in the abstract, no. And in principle, of course not either. But the sad reality of living in the times that we do, uh, in living in the times where people choose to make race matter, well, it matters because people think it matters. What always matters is culture uh, and ideas and societal norms. And if people attach those to a particular race or to racism in general, then racism will breed a culture. Uh, culture, race and thinking become inseparable uh, and synonymous to people such that they can be ardent ideological racists and don't even realize it. A very old form of this is Islam. Uh, Islam is a racist religion. I actually think that it's a proto-ideology more than a religion. Um, it is a religion based upon the Arab race, if we want to use modern terminology, uh, or ethnicity, perhaps you should say. Uh, it seeks supremacy for those people uh, on that basis. It, uh, it simply chooses uh, God to determine that supremacism, that chosenness, as opposed to, for example, a 19th century conception of uh, biology. Uh, Islam says that uh, Arabs are the supreme people, uh, what we would perhaps today refer to as race. <coughs> uh, it says that uh, God uh, can only be understood in uh, Arabic, which is very strange for a, a universal monotheistic God. Uh, Unlike Judaism, Islam is an imperialist religion. Uh, it see seeks to subjugate everybody else. And you either become Muslim or perish. People will routinely cite uh, verses to explain why Islam is not racist, or indeed why it's, why it's feminist even. Uh, never, never mind that it supports women's rights. Women's rights. It's actually feminist. It's a, it's a female uh, supremacist religion. This is all nonsense, of course. Uh, okay, you can you can pick your verses, but the reality of what's what's so horrible about that is that the reality of the situation is it's a very racist religion uh, in practice, uh, and people uh, it's very racist against people with black skin, funnily enough. Um, but nobody nobody wants to say that today. That's the big difference between what you say. Uh, it's it's easy to say something. But the practice can be very different, and to deny that is uh, horrible. You're you're looking the other way, shall we say? And of course, Islam has racism built into it um, because it grew up uh, to dominate surrounding tribes in the area, uh, and you need to say why. You need a, Islam as a justification for domination. That's what it is. So it says, well, we're chosen. Let's conquer them. And of course, that's why anti-Judaism is, is so rife uh, in Islam and amongst the peoples uh, of it. You'll notice that this is uh, exactly the same as a European ideology. Um, yes, of Nazism, uh, a German ideology, uh, which explained why the German people were chosen and why they should have an empire and deserve to have an empire. Uh, different times, different words, but it's the same impetus and it's the same way of thinking. So <clears throat> because people make race matter, it also means that movements of cultural groups turn into racist uh, and sometimes racial groups themselves. Uh, the premier example of this today is the so-called black uh, uh, movement or black culture, uh, so-called black people. Um, and to oppose a racist cultural group uh, that has bound itself by its race uh, comes very, very close to ending up having to oppose the race because it has tied itself to a racist idea. This doesn't have to be race. It can be something uh, much less conten uh, contentious. It could be age. Uh, it could be sex. You know, it, it could be absolutely anything that people choose to arbitrarily be important. Um, we could have people who choose to say uh, how big your nose is, is important, right? And all the people with big noses, they have to get together 
and they're going to have a particular culture and, and they're supposed to live a certain way and act a certain way and all these things. In that case, big noses become the new race. Um, and you end up in a situation where you don't have, you don't want to oppose people with a big nose, but everybody that has a big nose is identifying in that way. See that point? Hope that comes clear. It's the same way that um, our society right now is a black supremacist society. And all it does is promote um, this so-called black culture. And it bombards you with it every single day. But as soon as you say, hey, why is everybody um, being promoted as black? And why is black being promoted as good? They say, ah, you're racist. You don't like black people. No, I don't have a problem with black people. I have a problem with black racism. Just like I have a problem with any racism. Um, I always think that, you know, suppose the Nazis had, had won World War II. <clears throat> Everybody on TV would end up looking like me, right? Blonde, blue-eyed, etc. Um, to oppose that would not be to op oppose blonde people. It would be to oppose blonde supremacism, or it would be, in general, to oppose racism, right? So that's really the horror of the situation. You end up trapped uh, in a situation where people of a certain race, the vast majority of them, are choosing to identify by their race. Um, and so to become an anti-racist ends up becoming opposing a race. It's a horrific, self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and like I said in a previous video, that's what makes racism horrible. It's not the, the, it's not the, the idea of it, the myth of it, it's the reality. And the reality is that it's a cultural effect. Personally, I am not willing to sacrifice the, major the minority of people with black skin who do not ascribe uh, to black racism just to overcome and stop the majority. Um, that's my position on all matters as it happens because once you start sacrificing even one person for what you think is the greater good, then you'll never stop. You will never stop. There'll never be, there'll never be too many people that you can sacrifice for the greater good. But nonetheless, the question and problem uh, still needs to be acknowledged. And of course, the outcome of that is exactly what um, what I want, at least, which is where everybody, no matter what colour their skin is, gets together um, who wants a society of values uh, and, in for, for example, wants to pursue truth and have nice manners. Um, all of those people to get together and oppose each of the individual racist groups. Simple solution. Not simple to do. And so regardless, the question um, and problem still needs to be acknowledged and taken squarely on. Uh, although, from my point of view, uh, a majority of people in the UK seem to ascribe to racism. And in particular, I mean, now black racism. You know, in the go back a few years, it was all about um, people in the Middle East. Uh, these things come and go in fads, right? So for me, the problem isn't even that a particular race has become racist. Uh, that is a problem, but in general, it's just that people are, 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 are acknowledging and accepting this racial way of, of living. What makes this even more difficult is the way that race has so many definitions uh, and uses. Uh, it has evolved in meaning, and I actually think it's become much dumber uh, and dumber over time. Uh, today, it is virtually synonymous with skin color. Uh, whereas in the 19th century, conceptions of race were, uh, they referred to a swathe of unique uh, ethno-cultural groups. Uh, you can even think of something like in Tolkien's work, race referred to a, a species, elf, dwarf, right? So race has many different uses, and these days it's, it's changing every second. You look at the way that people call Islam a race. You're racist because you're against Islam. Islam is not a race. Uh, it might be racist, but it's not a race. Uh, the dumbing down of the term race happened, um, I think, because the left decided to apply uh, Nazi ideas post-World War II to racialize all non-white peoples uh, to enact their, their revolution, their left-wing revolution. Um, having lost the working class to liberalism. Uh, 
This allowed them to call the whole of Europe, and now America, the USA, and their empires as being racist and inherently racist. Uh, that they were built because of and for racism, as you hear the woke today say. The fact that nearly all of the European colonies were in places where the um, prior population did not have white skin um, was, of course, simply an inevitable result of having empires that expanded beyond the borders of Europe because most of the world did not have white skin or what people call Caucasian traits, right? Uh, it's just an inevitably of having a world empire. Um, but the left wants it to seem like it was some sort of uh, purposeful racist endeavour. Postmodern Nazism of the contemporary bourgeoisie uh, is even cruder and more stereotyping and more stigmatizing than the original Nazis in this regard. Uh, for the original Nazis, race was a multi-layered term uh, that referred to specific groups of people. For example, the Nazis used the term Aryan uh, and the perfect Aryan, well, they look like me, only taller because I'm quite short. Um, the concept of the Aryan man was a false one, right? It was a mythos, uh, a mythos for Europeans, of, of proto-Europeans, um, you know, emerging in the modern period to, to replace religious conceptions of origin. Um, and, and it's really the same as that. It's, it's like the Greeks, the Jews, they have their mythology of uh, the origin of man. Well, this was a, uh, a modern and coming into postmodern conception based upon new ideas of biology. Nonetheless, racial terms back then were much more thorough uh, and sincere uh, than the entirely hypocritical and manipulative, manipulative use of race today. So, does race matter? Not to me it doesn't. Truly, uh, I cannot tell you how absolutely non-existent is my personal concept of race. I absolutely do not think of myself as a racial person. Uh, I think of me as me, as Rob. Uh, I think of myself by my uh, uh, my nation, my history and values, uh, human even. Uh, I think of myself as part of various intellectual traditions, um, family, many things. But I really don't think of myself in this way. Uh, it's weird to me. Um, and yet, unfortunately, my race does matter because a lot of people think it matters. That's why I'm not included on certain lists of uh, protected characteristics or that I get a little extra help because I'm a man, I'm white, uh, I'm straight, so I don't get any extra help. And people make all sorts of things matter that really shouldn't matter. If we were to take the Nazi symbol of the swastika, uh, for example, today it's a it's essentially a banned symbol of hate, right? Um, yet that is only because people accepted the Nazi um, view of the swastika. This is the problem. People have actually said, "Oh, here's what the Nazis thought of something. We're going to accept their thinking of it, even if we're even if we say we're against it. We're actually going to accept their position on the world, right?" So you go back, and the swastika is a global symbol, uh, and often of peace. Um, it can be found everywhere. It's on cola bottles. It's in Hindu temples. Uh, it's in it's in uh, go. It's in the Norse um, works. Uh, you can actually find it. I've seen pictures of old synagogues, ancient synagogues in uh, Jerusalem. I think that have a swastika on them. Right. I'm not talking about um, a, a vandalism here. Right. This is a global symbol of peace. Um, I'm not allowed to show you this global symbol of peace uh, because YouTube uh, has accepted and wants you to accept the Nazi view of the swastika, so I can't show you it. Uh, they want you to racialize everything like they have. They want you to think like a Nazi. They want you to categorize things, populations, uh, into entirely meaningless racial categorizations because it's easy to manipulate uh, and run giant globalist empires when people think in, in these ways. Um, I don't want you to think like that. Uh, I will talk to you directly about race, uh, uh, why it has meaning, uh, meaning uh, as long as people think it does. So does race matter? Yes, until we stop making it matter.